I do with this, the homie Casey here. I busted up my wife's T4 frame a little while back. Um, you guys probably saw that. Check out my channel if you have it. So we got this new frame in. <clears throat> I'm gonna teach y'all how to do a frame swap on a T4. I've done it on my EX30 a bunch of times and I'll do it here for this T4 uh, on video. So um, you guys can see, pretty simple process. But uh, let's see what we're working with here. The first thing I'm gonna do is um, your suspension. The, the, you might have the air suspension on your T4 or you might have a spring suspension. We got the new T4 Pro, so we have this upgraded suspension. And what you gotta do, the first thing, is you need to either let all the air out of your suspension or completely back off the spring. And uh, once the spring is completely backed off, then you can unbolt the suspension from here and from here and pull the suspension out. And you could loosen the uh, stanchion bolts here and pull out the stopper bolts there and you could pull the whole frame out. But you gotta also remove the Pull the motor plugs and the hall sensor wire from up here too and you could pull this all out. So the first things first, I'm going to go ahead and release all the tension from my shock. And once I do that, I can pull the shock out. So the reason why we're going to replace the frame is because we have a nice frame crack here because my T4 got away from me or it's my wife's T4 and it got away from me and smashed the frame. And I'm probably going to have to pull this off and bend it back and a few other things. So we're going to start with replacing the frame. And i got to back off the suspension all the way out. And then unbolt it. So I'll be back when that's done right there. All right, guys. Okay, folks, you can see my suspension is gone. So um, the reason it hasn't contracted is because I have it set up on blocks here. And that's how I hold it when I work on it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect and pull out my my charge port. I don't want to pull on the wires. I want to pull and disconnect it by pulling the connector. And then you got to do one, two, three screws. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect that from there, pull it out, and put it right in here. And I'm going to get all those dog hairs out. And I'm going to go ahead and put the black goop on it. So first things first, transfer the charge control board there and then I'll come back and see where we're at okay people we got the charge board removed and we're going ahead and gonna go ahead and install it in the new frame first thing is first you're gonna want to pick the old black goop off of there off of the screws um, sometimes I got to use like a scissor to do this or like a little a side cutter or whatever takes it off probably the best um, whatever you can use to clean that stuff off and then uh, you're gonna want to relock tight the screws and check well you want to check the bottom of the board first make sure there's nothing weird on there no dog hairs because I got my dog over there breathing all heavy doing Darth Vader on camera sorry but you want to check the charge board that it's clean no damage and there's nothing on the screws and that all the screws have black goop on them and everything is Good, get the dog hairs off. And you want to put it in the frame. Like so. And then what you can do is lock tight all these screws back in place. I guess I can go ahead and do that. You're gonna to have to re-black goop them, so. And I have, um, I have some toilet paper here and that's so that I can, you don't need a ton of Loctite, just enough. I kind of dab some off sometimes. And you'll go ahead and screw it back down where it was. Let's see if I can find the screw hole on camera. Yeah, I got it. So I don't tighten all the screws right away. I put it in, put them in with the screws loose and then tighten it, all three of the screws. And then tighten it. Sorry you guys hear my dog going crazy licking herself. She's cleaning herself over there. Right, let's see. 
just loose till all three are in. Pepper, shh, stop breathing loud on camera, jeez. Uh, way too much Loctite there, you don't need that much. All right, once all the screws are loose, what I'm gonna do is kinda like push the board back evenly so that it's away from the control board and then tighten it down. kind of you know a little bit tight because it's going to have loctite and it's going to have black goop on it this is not going anywhere um you'll see you don't want to put a lot of torque on those screws because i've heard that that can cause weird problems so now what you want to do is take your black goop and put a little dab on each screw point 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 let's see i'll go ahead and do that how i do that is I have this stuff configured as a way where I press the tail and a little tiny bit comes out and then I grab it with the ball head and then I smear it on a screw. One. Yeah, and I, I use a little bit more stuff than Be Good does. They probably use something that's non-conductive. I'm just using some little black RTV. And I'm careful not to get it on the circuit. I only get it on the screw and the non-conductive parts of the circuit. And so far I haven't had any issues with it. And what you might want to do, see what the, here's why I have the toilet paper, so I could clean my Q-tip. And what you might want to do, let me see. I can grab the, the multimeter here. Set it for continuity. This is an old multimeter, so it doesn't work very well, but let's set it for continuity test. And just make sure there's no shorts between power and ground no shorts between power and ground there might be momentary beeps from capacitors no shorts between power and ground see and uh because if you have shorts between power and ground you do not want to plug your batteries into there you're gonna have a real bad day that's how you make yourself a fire so we're screwed and we're glued and we've checked for shorts now we can proceed we also are loctited okay I'll see you guys at the next step after I clean up my mess here because that's just the kind of person I am. So that's it. Now that the charge board is out, the next thing you're going to want to do is cut these zip ties free. You're going to have to take your beeper out and your light out. And to do that, you're going to have to carefully take the black goob off of the beeper and the headlight line and disconnect them. So I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna pull the headlight screws out and I'm gonna pull the beeper and the headlight wires off of the main board to help free the main board up. I'll be right back. Just thought I'd throw this out there real quick. It looks like the light is connected to the rear leftmost connector and the beeper is connected to the connector near the little blue module here. You have to excuse the noise, I got my little fan running. <clears throat> it's kind of warm in here, but anyway. So I got the, the headlight off as you can see and the beeper out. Um, uh, yeah, I forget which one it would wear, but that's why I got it on video. But anyway. What I need to look at now is the right wire is yellow or brown. The middle wire 
It's like uh, blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. Probably not because it's not serrated. Um, I'm gonna get a serrated plier and pull these out carefully one at a time. But I see. Yellow, blue, and green. Yellow, blue, green. So yellow, blue, green as viewed from the rear. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the tail light ponytail extension plugged into the board. And all I need to do is take this black goop off the hall sensor and then plug these motor wires and pull them out. Then I'll have access to the four screws to remove the main board. So I'll be back once I have that done. Okay, the motor wires are up. And we see yellow, blue, and green, and the hall sensor here. So now you'll need to disconnect those. There's a there's a little cable holder here and that will fall away from the frame. So now you can go ahead and unscrew the main board from the upper frame by cranking these out. I guess I can do that on camera for you, but there's really nothing much exciting about it. There's gonna be some thermal pad on the bottom. So. You gotta be careful trying not to smash the components on the board like I just did when you're removing it. You should not be doing this on camera like me. Especially for the first time. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank those screws. Yank. Yank. I don't think I'll be able to lift this up, and I've already drained the board, the, the power out of the capacitors. Oh, there it is. It just came right up on me. So, boom. You can see where it was in contact with the chassis. And now, I'm going to clean the other chassis out and transfer that straight over. Alright, dudes, let's go ahead and put this board in. I'm gonna grab a piece of teepee and we're gonna wipe out any dog hairs and any other particular maggot or that's in there because you got the dog in here and there's a ceiling surface so who knows what kind of oil on there where we can clean it up if possible. dog hairs out okay. nice and clean so now I'm gonna take this guy what is that I'm gonna go ahead and slap it in here I noticed while it's out it might be a good idea to take some of these this is the black goop for on the connector from the display so if you have a side cutter, it might be a good idea really quick to, while it's out, just remove that goop that was in the way. Connecting the display there. So that you can put new black goop on. There. All the black goop's out. Now, like I said earlier, uh, like I said earlier, uh, I discharged the caps on this board before. 
I'm touching this. You don't want to be touching this board without discharging those caps first. And how you do that is unplug the batteries and then you try to turn the wheel on. And the power will drain out of the capacitors. So before I put the screws back in, I'm going to try and cut some of this. Some of this black, black goop from the original mount job. Just get as much as you can, it doesn't have to be all of it. You want to make sure you're not dropping any in here. Don't drop anything metal or in there, you'll be having a bad day. Let's see here. Now you want to get your Loctite out. Get it a little bit. Where is it? Let's see here. There it is. Leave it loose to start. <laughs> it looks like it's threading, so get leave it loose. Just need a little bit of Loctite on these, not a lot, because they're going to be glued. Now I would try and probably slide it forward just a little bit if possible, and now torque it down all the way evenly. Do like a half tight at first, you know, so that the board seats well, so that you don't like. bend it or anything. And what do you know, the screws are lining right back up to where they were. Some of them, I guess. So that's torqued, that's torqued, now it's torqued, and that's torqued. Now, a fun part. We gotta clean our lock tight, put it away. It always gets all over the place. And take out the dead old black goop. And One screw. Two screw. Three screw. Clean it off. It might actually use a little bit more on that first one.
Don't want to get it on the circuit. Oh, I saw dog hair go in. Make sure you don't get dog hairs in there. Make sure you don't get anything on the circuit. I'm going to have to pull that dog hair out with a tweezer. I see it went between the capacitors. You don't want dog hairs. No dog hair. Okay, so now I'd probably let the screws dry a little bit before I put them back in so that I don't get uh, glue all over all the wires and everything. So there we go. And now we need to continue to unbolt the old chassis from the frame. And I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment. Okay guys, we're now free to undo this, undo this, undo this, 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 and this. And we could pull the chassis off the stanchions and we could check out the stanchions and make sure they're all straight and everything. And we could put the new chassis on. We're going to have to pull off the old seat brace as well. And I think I'm going to have to bend that back because it's a little bit tweaked from the old, uh, from the crash there. So. I'm going to pull those apart and put the new one on and we'll get uh, some more video. Okay folks, you can see I got the old frame off. Uh, the old frame's on the right, new frame's on the left. And you can see I got a nice bend there. It's actually pretty still strong, but what happens is it's causing the battery box to rub on the wheel. So or be too close to the wheel so tweaked old frame gone new frame here uh, I got the old seat seat frame we're gonna thread that in really quick with some Loctite As with everything else, I just get it loose and then put all the screws in at the end. So, and you don't need a ton of Loctite for this, just a little bit, just enough. Oddly, screws don't want to start on video. When you, if you're trying to build something on video, screws don't want to start. It's like a, it's like a thing, man. Good luck with your screws on the video. Alright, let's see. Oh, we got one started. See that seat that seat frame is just a little bit tweaked, but I think it'll be cool. My my EX30 one's a little tweaked too, and that seems seems to work anyway. As long as it's not broken, it's good. Bump, 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 the camera. Alright. So now that those are all uh, in loosely, I'm going to position it at about halfway back and then. Crank it down. Uh, I like it about halfway. I don't know if that's where it's supposed to be. So, anyways, after I do this, uh, I can put this. I got the the hardware to put the chassis back on so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up and then I'll lock tight these and set the chassis in place and then get ready to tighten it up so I'll be back in a bit guys okay here we go I've done some uh, Cleaning up of the frame, I read the Loctite of these, clean this stuff up a little bit, make sure it's all good. No, I got my top frame in. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is lock it to the right position and then I could get these torqued. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'm gonna check that it's all straight and everything. So once I have it tightened down, I'll be back. All right guys, I got the frame up here and how you get these tight is you wanna check that your battery, your lower battery hanger is equidistant to the wheel before you tighten it. And mine's just a little tiny bit. That way, anyway, you use a uh, caliper to get these equidistant to the wheels to get this thing straight before you tighten these pinch bolts down, and then you tighten them alternating until they're nice and snug. You don't want to over torque them, you'll break it because it's a pinch system. So be careful. All right, once your stanchions are straight and mounted, you can go ahead and get the Motor hanger bolt there, motor wire hanger bolt. And then you gotta get these back into the frame here. I only got one hand while I do all this, but let's see if I can get it working. Just about. Just snug, snug everything up, then that to be cranked down. Make sure it fits in there good. Go ahead and plug your hall sensor wire back in, and you're gonna have to regroup it. Now, if I remember correctly, these. Yellow. And blue and green. Maybe I should actually rotate them here, but you get the idea. And then this is just some shrink tube to take up the slack. And this will be going to the tail lights, and this will go to here. And we gotta put the headlight on, and the beeper, and everything. So I'll be back once I do that. All right guys, so I got the headlight in place. I got the headlight wire plugged in. I got the beeper wire plugged in. I got the motors plugged in. I got all the wires plugged in. Uh, the first problem I ran into is this screw in this plate, this hole, it goes through the chassis, but in the plate in the front, it's not tapped. So I'm going to have to go get an M4 drill and tap and drill those hole out because I can't mount my light yet. So I'll be back. I got to go drill this hole and tap out and I'm going to black goop the light, the beeper, the hall sensor. And um, I'm gonna get this back together and I'm gonna get my tail lights back on too. Spent a little bit of time straightening out the uh, rear battery or the bottom battery hangers um, to the wheel so their the fork legs are nice and straight now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the suspension back on since I can't do, um, I gotta go get a drill and a tap for the light so I can't do that right this second. And then I'm gonna do that before I glue everything back down and run it all again. So I'm gonna put the suspension back in right now. So there. We're applying Loctite on everything because if you don't, when they do the suspension, you only want to get it on like the first thread because it can get all over inside the suspension and bind up the suspension and you don't want that to happen. So let's see here, there's a missing wrench. Where's the wrench? Oh, grab, just grab this one here. Here we go. I gotta try and get that in there before the Loctite drips out. I don't want to bind up the suspension. Okay, I'm not tight. And we got the other one up. There we go. 
now it's in. So we can go ahead and put the screw. Some Loctite. A little bit of dog hair. Dog hair is always good. sucker down and make sure it's fully tight. Fully tight. Don't want to overdo it. Be careful. That's tight right there. So now all we gotta do is get this rear pivot in. I may have to compress the spring a tiny bit. The spring is good but I may have to compress the uh, the shock just a little bit, the damper. No, no, we're good. There we go. It went right in. See, couldn't get it in the other way before, but that's how the uh, the trick to get it in there now. So now I can go ahead and finish finish assembly. And just the first two threads get a little on there. You don't need a lot for this. Like they used to say in school, a little bit of glue goes a long way. I uh, know, I'm lame. Here. We're done with the suspension reinstall. So now, you can see it's not tensioned. So we can go ahead and use the suspension tool to add some, add some tension to the suspension there. Uh, we can get it as far as we can by hand first. Save it some time. Crank it down. And your suspension's good to go. That's what I like about the new Bigot suspension is it's really easy to adjust, no problem. So there we go. We basically have our spring swapped. All I gotta do is drill and tap the light holes, and then I gotta zip tie this stuff, and then I gotta do the black glue here and here, and then I gotta put the tail lights back on, and we should have a working wheel. I'm gonna put the batteries back on and everything, but basically that's our frame swap right there. Um, Big Old forgot to drill and tap those two holes. That's cool. I can do that. But uh, other than that, our frame swap's done, and uh, you should cut the video of me riding this thing around again. So I'll see y'all later. Peace. Okay, guys, I got it back together, and she's rolling. Um, I still have to tap this little hole here and tap this hole here. But uh, yeah, that's how you switch a T4 frame right there. Put the seat on it. And put those screws back in and then it's ready to go. And then I'm going to do some upgrades over here. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.